This video is brought to you by Bookmark.com. Bookmark's a free website builder where you can create a professional looking website with hosting in just a couple minutes by answering seven simple questions. Bookmark's AI engine Ada literally builds your website right in front of your face in less than two minutes and you can edit virtually every aspect of the page once it's complete. You can also upgrade to connect your existing domain and create an online store with e-commerce integration. It's awesome. Click the link in the description below or check them out at Bookmark.com. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech and today we're taking a look at the Mass Drop Alt 65% modular keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how it looks. Two Mass Drop videos back to back, but you guys have been all over me to review this keyboard and the drop is now active again for a few more days. So I wanted to get this out in time just in case you guys want to cop. And yes, for transparency, this was sent out by Mass Drop for review and I have an affiliate agreement with them, but you should know by now this doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Mass Drop Alt comes in one of three flavors. You get bare bones, that's no caps and no switches. So you can add your own later. That's going to run you 140. For 180, you'll get the caps and you'll get your choice of Kale Speed Silvers, Kale Box Whites, or Halo Trues, which I've never used. Or for a whopping $200 even, you can get the board, the caps, and Cherry MX Brown switches, which is how this board came. So the question on everyone's mind, the reason you're here, is it worth it to pay up to a $100 price premium to get this board over a Ducky One Too Many or the GMMK Compact? There is no right or wrong answer to that question for everyone, but I'm going to help you try to answer that question for you today. So the Alt is a 65% board. You're going to give up a right control key and menu key, and in exchange, you're going to get arrows. Dedicated arrows with no hack or workaround, and you'll also score delete, home, and page up and down keys. The 65% Alt is going to add a little bit in terms of dimension mentioned versus a true 60%. So here's how it stacks up size wise versus a ducky one too many and my personal favorite TKL board, the Logitech G Pro. Rest assured that none of your money is going to packaging here because the box is super basic. Inside you get two case feet, a gray rubberized USB-C to USB-A cable, a switch puller, nicer than the one with the GMMK, and a pretty sexy aluminum keycap puller that actually has a hidden Phillips head screwdriver in it. Build quality here is pretty tough, man. This thing is machined from a solid block of aluminum. It's a low profile floating switch design, so no bezel here and this board rides totally flat by default. It's got the two included magnetic feet to give you a little bit of incline, and I mean a little bit. I actually would have preferred like one more level of adjustment on this thing. They stay put just fine until you attempt to slide the board laterally. I have heard reports of these things popping off when you move your board sideways without lifting it up. So with the solid aluminum body, that base plate then is the same polished silver aluminum so you don't get that big light pop you'll get with a white back plate but it reflects better than a black plate and it still gives a really clean look the base has a seven millimeter border around the keys presumably this is to accommodate the edge lighting i would have preferred no edge lighting and the frame really hugged up against the keys but i prefer a really minimal frame it is a hot swap board with the same kiowa sockets that we see on the gmmk compact it has all the same functionality so you can literally swap plate mounted switches as fast as you change caps this allows you to experiment around with a bunch of different switch types to find one that works for you without shelling out for a whole new keyboard. Be aware that like the GMMK, this does not allow for PCB mounts, so you are going to find yourself clipping some stems if you have more exotic taste in switches. The keycaps here are double shot PBT shine through in two-tone gray and charcoal. Very nice, very refined font, nothing gamery about it. These do have some texture to them, which I really like. I love the overall aesthetic. I may install a couple of colored accent caps on this board from time to time, but it would take something like a full set of lasers for me to redo the entire board. Finding new keycaps is a piece of cake. Finding unique shine through keycaps for your RGB that's a little tougher. I'm gonna be sticking with these for now. Stabilizers. They're not the worst. They're not like Vortex bad, but they're not what I expected for a board at this price point. They don't rattle really, but they do have a lot of play to them. Realistically, I'll probably be swapping these out at some point in time. Word on the street is I'll probably have to take the entire board apart to do that. As for connections, you get two USB-C ports, one on either side, so you can cable manage however you'd like. You can also use this port to piggyback like a separate custom numpad or macro box, or you can use it for storage. Just be aware if you're gonna use it for storage, it is gonna be limited to USB 2 speeds. All right, so you kind of have to talk about lighting at the same time that you talk about remapping this board because there is no software on this board. It all takes place on a firmware level, but unlike a lot of the other 60% keyboards out there, you won't be doing any programming on the actual board itself. This board uses QMK firmware, so you can go to the Mass Drop configurator, you can set it up the way you want to, export that firmware, and then flash it to the board. This has pros and cons. Pros, you can remap or reassign virtually any key on this keyboard. You're not locked into any hard function 
information whatsoever on this board. And if you're new to QMK, you get a nice graphic interface on how to do this. Then it's just a matter of flashing it to the keyboard, which may sound a little scary the first time you do it, but it's really no big deal. I'm not going to cover the entire programming process start to finish in this video, but I will leave a link in the description to a video that does a really good job of outlining that process. And in case you're completely terrified by the idea of doing this, Mastrop does include a little cheat sheet, and they've got some baked in functions already on the board without you having to touch the firmware. The biggest con for functionality right now is that there's no support for macro recording, no support for macros whatsoever. It gets a little murky here too because it looks like you can actually write your own code from the ground up in QMK, but I'm going to venture that the overwhelming majority of users do not want to learn how to code just to record a macro on their keyboard. And the same holds true for the RGB lighting. You do get a few options baked in here so you don't have to touch the firmware if you don't want to, but they're really limited. Even the Mastrop config only allows for some pretty basic assignments and a really limited amount of animations, so if you're used to the wealth of RGB modes and animations you get on most consumer boards, this is something you want to be aware of. And again, you can probably code some crazy stuff in QMK, but it's kind of the same thing as the macros. It's a really steep learning curve there. The quality of the lighting is very good though. They're all 100 hertz LEDs, so no flicker. The strip around the outside of the board is pretty diffused. You can still tell where the individual LEDs are, of course, but the whole strip is pretty saturated. All in all, I really love the aesthetic of this board as a whole. So where does it stand in terms of value? The market for this board seems to land somewhere right in the middle between the everyday user and the hardcore keyboard nerd. Some aspects of it will be too complex or unnecessary for the everyday dude that just wants to play some games, and some aspects of it are going to be too limiting for the hardcore keyboard guys. From a consumer standpoint, first you have to decide if you even need hot swap switches. If you know what switches you like and the ducky one too many comes in that flavor and your main focus is gaming and not tweaking your keyboard, it's a pretty solid option for you. If you do want a modular design for your board, I look at this as like a rich man's GMMK compact. Same functionality deeper programming, but with a steep learning curve to learn how to embrace all that functionality. It's like a scale between convenience and flexibility, with the alt on the flexibility side and the GMMK on the convenience side. A perfect example being that if I want to do something as simple as changing the single color of an LED, I have to compile a new firmware and flash the board to do that. Me personally, I'm a big fan of this board. I like to test different switches. I like the included caps. I really like the overall aesthetic. I love having dedicated arrows. I don't use macros and I don't get crazy with their RGB, so these are non-issues for me. Build quality is super solid, dual connections are solid, the only real low point of this board are the stabilizers, and I've seen worse, but I'll probably still swap them out. So which way did I go? Alt or one too many? What does my desk look like right now? Well, it looks like this. <laughs> Sometimes I like the one too many for gaming. For everything else, I use the alt. Having those dedicated arrows when I'm scripting and editing is just too nice. I would go 65% over 60% all day if I could only have one board. Your mileage may vary, but I'm never getting rid of this board. Now, if you want to grab one of these on pre-order, you have roughly nine days before that window closes again. They're set to ship out towards the end of May. Now, if you like everything about this board, but you need a TKL, they have the same board with the same features called the Control. It runs about 200, you have a few more different options and switches, and it's got about the same amount of time before the drop closes. Big thanks again to Mastrop for sending this out. As usual, I will leave affiliate links in the description below if you'd like to grab an alt or a control for yourself. If you got any questions about anything I covered today, just ask me in the comments. I will do my best to help you out. Today's setup flex comes to us from James at Double Dragon Custom Mods, and wow, James is a PC modder, and this is about as custom as it gets. He actually designed and fabricated this desk. It houses a custom water-cooled AMD FX 8350 on an Asus Tough Sabretooth board with 16 gig of G-Skill Ares RAM and an EVGA GTX 980, and it's just stacked with alpha cool gear. You can see a lot of pics of the design and build out on his Instagram page. James does custom PCs, YouTube videos, and you can sometimes catch him streaming on Friday mornings. I'll leave links below so you can go check out some of his awesome work. James, thank you so much for your submission. That's awesome, man. If you'd like to be featured in an upcoming set of flex, hit the link in the corner for details. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.